My name is Vahid Chitza, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead yeah. and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Perfect. My name is Stephanie Eilif. I'm calling in from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm a self-love coach, and I'm here to help give you guys some self-love. So what the heck is self-love? What yeah. is self-love, right? Like, we all ask that. And to me, self-love is really, truly learning how to accept yourself, how to let go of guilt, how to let go of shame, and fully, radically accept all that you are and fully step into that and just shine as you're created to be. Doesn't that make you a little bit selfish? No way. You're selfish if you don't actually accept yourself and love yourself because then you don't allow anybody else to see you. You don't allow anybody else to truly love you. You don't show up fully for yourself. So it's more selfish to not have self-love because what's happening is you're staying in this level of self-sabotage of not fully showing up as you can be and not learning how to fully receive love or give love. And the amount of love that we have for ourselves is the amount of love that we can receive. And there's all this abundance and all these people who want to pour into you and love on you and help you you see you but you will push that away you won't receive that until you learn to love you and you won't be able to give all that love abundantly and unconditionally until you learn to love you either yeah i can't give love out unless i check with my wife so i don't know oh, yeah. how it is you call, but in los angeles i gotta check with my boss first so i gotta yeah. watch out don't get me in trouble girl don't I won't. Get me in trouble. I won't. We're, we're gonna be good here no worries all right so here's my question okay how does an entrepreneur, how does a businessman go about creating this self-love if they're not familiar with it? What are some of the steps that you recommend for them to take so they could be on the correct path? I love that. I think first off, it's recognizing, okay, where am I lacking in self-love? So where do I feel the most out of balance with self-love currently? And you could rate that like in your, for your body, for your mind, for your relationships with yourself, with your loved ones, with your business partners, with your work. Do you love the work that you do? Like rate that on a one to 10. Where would you feel like you're in balance of or out of balance with? And then start to ask and self-reflect on that. Like, could I be doing more in my business? Could I be shining more? Could I be doubling what I'm doing? Could I be giving more? More energy to that more creativity to that could I be amping up what I'm doing but because of my self-worth and where my self-love currently is at I don't believe that I'm worth that and I don't believe I can be disciplined enough to actually achieve that because of every new level of success there's a new devil that we have to fight right and so in order to be able to fight that and to truly gain the success that you crave and that you want you have to ask like where am I lacking that at and where what's my belief system there how can I change that belief and start to believe I'm worthy of that I'm enough in that I'm abundant in that so you can fully step into that and i and that's for men that's for women that's for anybody especially in the entrepreneur world like it's all you if you don't believe in you nobody else is going to believe in you right and so if you can't get out there and be like i'm worth this like i can value myself well that if you don't value you and love you what that's going to look like in your business you what you are you're giving away everything for free you're running on empty you are depleted you are not getting new clients you aren't growing in your business your creativity is just completely dry because you don't feel like you're worth it and so when you start to say like i'm so valuable like who, who would not want to know what i have to give like it'd be a disservice if i do not teach people self-love then you're that shifts in you and you're like i gotta create all the things let's teach everybody everything and so then your business changes you change you grow you level up and your frequency changes and all of a sudden you can grow but it's accepting that you're worthy of that in whatever entrepreneurship level that you're at like if you can't believe in you and see that this is what is for you you will never let anybody else see you either and you won't shine authentically as you because you're gonna be so worried about comparison so anybody start believing in you that's step one yeah, but that's not an easy thing to do all the time either. It's not because we're we're deeply rooted to believe that we're not worth it. We're not enough. Have self-doubt. Compare yourself. Look at everybody else on social media and say, oh, I'm not enough intel. So if you can change that and be like, okay, how could I learn to see other people and see what they're doing and actually celebrate them and see that if they're doing it, I can do it too. Because if they're making millions of dollars, working from home and they're getting all these new clients, they're creating new systems, new, new click funnels, new pipes, like everything they're doing. Why can't you do it? There's nothing different between you and them. They just believe they can do it and they push through it every single day. And in order to do that is through imperfect action. Every single day you have to make action steps after action step because we're creatures of habit. So if you can start to create that habit by imperfect action, pretty soon you're just going for it. You don't even know it. This was a habit that I created for myself. Instead of saying no to things that scared me, it was a yes. Like, absolutely, yes, I will do this. Like, you want me to go live? Uh, yes, let's go. Like, it was just stop thinking about it. 
stop going into it because you're living in fear of what you don't even know to be true yet. So go out and try it. And that way you can start to believe it for yourself. So where have you been all these years? Like I've been looking for someone like, so where? <laughs> you haven't been ready for it yet. You haven't been like, you're like, oh, I, I'm ready for this. And so now I'm here because now you're ready. So we see what we want to see and we hear what we want to hear. A lot of crazy people in Utah. That's why I wasn't ready. That's <laughs> very true. It's very true. <laughs> It was so funny. We were going, I think it was like 12, 14 years ago. Uh, we, it was like five of us in a car. And we were passing through Utah to get to Vegas um, for, for, for the mastermind group. Oh, and we, cool. got pulled, we got pulled over by cops because we were booking it. I wasn't driving. Somebody else was. And that's the only memory I have from Utah getting pulled over and we weren't doing that fast we were doing like 90 in like a 75 or 80 miles an hour zone it wasn't a big deal but we got pulled it over so. Utah, you cannot go over like five miles after that they're like sir what are you doing so yeah it's good though you have to come That's back good. out to utah we can mastermind together we can create all the themes it's beautiful there's lots of good hikes it's awesome love it so here's my other question for you okay what happens when i keep promises to myself internally psychologically well i know what happens you build up more confidence because you made a promise to yourself and you delivered on it so the smaller the promises the more you build up and you get that i i get that but i want to get your opinion on it yeah. why do i need to keep the promises to myself because until you actually trust yourself and respect yourself you won't allow yourself to continue to grow in your business and your relationships and your self-worth and how you show up as a parent and how you show up as a friend. Because ultimately, think about it. Like the people you respect the most, you uh, you look up to them the most and you, you hold their boundaries. You do what they say. You look up to them. But if you can't respect you, if you don't hold your boundaries true to you, you won't demand anybody else respect you or holds your boundaries true for you too. So by keeping the promises to you, that helps your brain say, oh, we're worth it. And we can prove that because all day today we kept every promise to ourselves so our word means something i do have integrity i am powerful whatever i speak is truth whatever i say i'm going to do i am going to do and so when you start to say that you start to really believe that by the brain system rewiring telling yourself you're doing that by you creating that habit through keeping the promises to you and when you break that habit it's a break of self-trust so think of it like a bank account like you want you want all the money in your bank account right like all the way up and so in order to do that, you have to make deposits in your bank account. You can't be withdrawing it, right? So you got to make deposits into your self-love account just as much as you are, are ever trying to withdraw it. So the more you deposit in it through self-trust, through keeping your promises to yourself or showing up for yourself, then that self-account love, it just grows, it grows, it grows, it grows. And it compounds interest in instantly. And you get to see the result instantly, which there's nothing that I've learned yet that you can invest in that you instantly see the return in. And so this is an instant return. And your brain loves that. It says, oh my gosh, serotonin release. Let's keep going. Let's keep doing this win after win after win. And it starts to help you see all the growth that you're having. Because so often we don't give ourselves those wins. And so we, so we lose track of our goals. We keep, st we start, breaking the promises to ourselves, right? But if you can start to track like win after win. So for an example, maybe normally every time you go to the gas station, you always buy a donut and a diet Coke. And now you're working on being healthier. So now you go to the gas station and you buy a granola bar and a water bottle. Win, like start to recognize that be like, yes. Okay, self-trust, self-love. I did this for myself. I'm recognizing this, I'm seeing this habit. That becomes a self-trust account. That becomes a deposit rather than a withdrawal. Because if you would have gone to the store and you would have bought a diet Coke and a donut, the second you get in the car, you've withdrawn self-love from yourself because you're like, today I couldn't even keep the promise to myself. Here I am once again, buying a donut and a Diet Coke. And so you don't trust yourself. And so that brain cycle starts to go into self-sabotage. You're like, I'm not worthy. I'm not enough. So then you go to a client meeting. You don't fully show up because you don't trust yourself because you just ate a donut and a Diet Coke. So you're like, what do I have to offer this client? I just ate a donut and a Diet Coke. I can't believe in myself. So you don't value yourself. You don't get that client. You go home, you get mad at your wife because she didn't do the dishes the right way or she didn't clean the house or whatever it is, but it's really, you're just mad at yourself because you didn't show up for yourself. And so you don't feel worthy of her love or her acceptance or the home. And so you push that away. So the more we can learn to trust ourselves, the more that we immediately impact everything in our lives. Because on the opposite end, you getting the granola bar and the water, you go to the client and you're like, yeah, like today, I just got this granola bar and a water. I believe in myself. I keep my word. Why would you not want to join me? Why would, why would you not want me to help teach you? You sign the client. You go home and you're like, babe, you look so good today. Thank you for 
being so amazing and being in my life. I love you. I love our life that we've created together because you just created that self-trust. Instant return. So always make the deposit into you rather than the withdrawal and start to recognize that so you can recognize your wins. Okay, I have a question. Um, okay, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, girl, you got me thinking now. Um, my question is this. I, I might I might be having a problem with the vocabulary. So what's the what's the definition of trust and what's the definition of commitment and how are they co correlated? Mm. Because if I all right, I'll let you answer it. No, I, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. So trust is a constant, right? We have to always be trust, learning how to trust ourselves, and our trust grows often right and like in relationships the more vulnerable you get with someone the more you trust them the more open you get the better your relationship becomes it's the same with yourself so the more you learn how to trust yourself the more committed you become to yourself the more you get to learn about yourself the more you hear yourself the more your intuition grows and the more you're committed to everything else in life that you do because you're actually committed to you because you trust that you will follow through with any commitment that you make until the end of the line of the road. And that's where success really comes from. That's the 1% of people is they're committed to their growth regardless because they trust themselves enough to know, I'll know the next step, I'll know the next path. Like your intuition grows with that trust. You believe in yourself, you trust yourself to be able to figure it out and to make more commitments to yourself that you normally would not do. And, and the word commitment freaks people out, right? Like if you want a new client and they're like, oh, sign the six month co commitment contract. They're like, oh, never mind. Never, I'm not that committed to myself. I thought I was, so I take it back. Like, or someone wants to go sell security systems and they're like, well, it's a two year commitment. They're like, oh, no, I'd rather be robbed. Never mind. If you're dating and there, someone says the word commitment, they're like, oh, mm, I, no, mm -mm. commitment scares us because we can't commit to ourselves because we don't trust we'll ever follow through with it because we've proven to ourselves before we're always buying the donut and the diet Coke, right? So when we start to trust ourselves, we start to commit to bigger things that we would have never committed to before. And we actually see it through time and time and time again. And so then you love yourself and you, the commitments and things that you can make and you choose different words. Like I'll always use the word commitment. Like I choose to commit to this. Like I'm powerful enough because I'm not afraid of that because I know I'll be true to it because I believe in myself. And if you can't believe in you, no one else will believe in you. And it starts with self So which one is first? Is it the trust or is it the commitment? It's both. I would say, so it's trusting yourself enough that you will keep the commitment. Because how many times do you say like, oh yeah, like I would totally, I'll, I'll stick to this diet or I'll go, I'll go hiking with you on Sunday or I'll, yeah, I'll make this new business plan. I'll create this new program. And then the second you do it, your brain says, no, you won't. You're going to let obstacles get in your way. You're going to be sidetracked. You're going to go out this weekend and party instead. Your commitment to yourself is at a hundred. And so you doubt yourself and you don't ever actually follow anything through. And so when you start to trust yourself, you can commit to things. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, okay, so let, let, let's shift it. Let, let's shift it a little bit. Okay. We have a lot of parents that they believe in too much, or is that even a right statement? Can we say sometimes parents believe in their children too much where they're saying, oh, you could do it all of these different things? Because there are a lot of gurus that are outside that they say that that is not the right way to do it. So, yeah. When it yeah, comes I think, to yeah, so there has to be a level of honesty, right? There has to be a level of coachability with this too. It's like in parenting, you can't just be like, well, you're perfect and everything's going to be fine. And like, we're all winners and we're all stars, like, cause that's not the case. But what you can do is you can teach your kids to learn how to trust themselves by keeping their commitments to themselves. So for an example of this, uh, my daughter signed up for singing lessons. And she like, after week three, she's like, Hey, I, I'm done with it. I'm like, no, we committed to doing this for three months. You're going to do it regardless, and you're going to show up with a happy heart. And at the end of it, you can decide if, this, if, if it's for you or not for you, but you have to see it all the way through. Because, baby girl, if you can't keep this promise to you now, in life, when it gets harder for a bigger promise, three weeks into it, if it's too hard, and I say, okay, you don't have to do it, I just taught you that pattern of behavior that after a couple weeks, if it's too hard, you don't have to believe in you, you anymore. You don't have to keep pushing through. And so let's try something new. No. You stay committed to anything you do until you cross that finish line because that's how you're going to believe in you. And that's how I know that you can do anything that's possible is if you'll do that. And so that's like the level of parenting that I personally believe in is that you got to keep the promises to you. And that's and for parenting with boundaries too, right? Like if you say you're going to discipline your children, discipline them. Like, because that's trust. They, they don't respect you or trust you if they know, if I'm like, hey, you can't have goldfish, we're done with snack time. 
And then they cry, throw a fit. 10 minutes later, I'm like, hey, fine, go have more goldfish. They don't respect me. I just lost trust. I just lost commitment. And they just learned if I throw a big enough fit, then I can get what I want. So I'm not teaching them. The don't be family. ruining all my techniques with my mom. Don't, don't be ruining. Don't be giving us secrets like that, okay? Okay, my bad, my bad. I'll keep it on the deep down low. Goldfish. We don't, and then we don't I don't know when was the last time I had a goldfish. You just reminded me that. Oh, my <laughs> Those, are good, stuff. Those yeah. are good stuff. No goldfish unless you make a million dollars. That's it. Yeah, That's exactly. You, you don't get to eat unless you make a million dollars. Know your, know your okay. place here. Okay. So hold on. So what you just explained, how is that different from dictatorship? Because you give them an option at the end? Well, no, because I think it's, it's, you're letting them decide. Like, it's a choice. Yeah, so I guess that is, and it's a choice, right? Like, I tell my kids, well, what do you want to choose? Like, what kind of person do you want to be right now? This is every, every second you get a choice. And I talk to them like they're adults in that. I'm like, well, you get to choose. So, like, how is this going to, are you going to feel proud of yourself? But you understand that that is completely different than what the majority of parents will do. You're going to be an outcast. Like, a lot of parents, secretly, they may not tell you in your face, but I could definitely, I could picture it clearly that they oh, yeah. don't agree with a lot of stuff you do is that the case or they all follow you oh no they don't agree with me and that's okay and i, li I live in utah and utah's a very submissive um and it's very like dominantly religious here by a certain religion and so they believe like very hardcore with that and i'm not that way because i want my kids to be authentic to them and i want them to live the life they want to live and and like people like i mean me and my kids are just like a lot of energy. I'm a lot of energy. I'm bright. I'm like all that. And my kids are the exact same way. And so we draw like attention in that. But I hope to teach people that they can choose to parent how they want. And they get to have their belief systems how they want. They can teach their kids how they want. Because if I can teach my kids to independently think for themselves and start to ask themselves why, why did I just choose that? Why did I just do that? Why did my mom discipline me this way? And like I talk it out with them. How much better are they going to become? And then they get to help shift the world for the next level of that too. So they don't have to, you, and I think we can all. I, I think you should stay in Utah. You're too controversial for California. You need to stay in Utah. You need to stay in Utah. No way. I got to get, I got to get this message out to the world, man. I'm trying to go everywhere. People need to see this. <laughs> no, no. More power to you. More power. Listen. Bless you. Bless you. It, it, it's one of those things that people can dictate. And, and I don't mean. I don't mean it in a bad way, but cultural, religious views, all that stuff is important. It gives us that structure that we need. Yeah. But I think within that structure, there must be the freedom that's given to individuals to choose their path. And Absolutely. I think that's as a society, that's why we have strived so far. And that's why so many other countries and other people look up to us. You know, not all the time. Sometimes we mess up and we got to own it. That totally. We mess up, you know, totally fine. But I feel like that's how it's got to be with our business and our children and all that stuff. So I, I, I definitely, listen, I talk about Napoleon Hill all the time. Napoleon Hill said it on a video recording. It's on YouTube. If it wasn't because of his misfortune of his mom passing away at age of nine, his good fortune would have never happened, which was the stepmother that came in that fixed up and cleaned up the family and put her foot down and said, we are not going to live the way you did. I'm going to clean up your dad. I'm going to do this. You're going to go become a dentist. And your butt is not going to be slinging guns anymore. You're going to get a typewriter. And your butt is going to sit down. And you're going to be powerful. And all that. So it was because of one powerful female. Mm. Who runs the world, girls? Who runs the world, girls? Yes! <laughs> so, but again, don't forget, he was a boy, he was a man too, so I, I don't know. Okay, I'll give credit. I'll, we, can, okay. we can do it, yeah. Okay, it, yeah. just yeah. give credit where credit is due. Credit, if, it wasn't credit, because yeah. of the, <laughs> if it wasn't because of the stepmom, thinking Gorich would have been, but can you imagine how many thousand millionaires would have not happened if that one event wouldn't have happened because the father could have easily said, you know what, I got married, I had kids, and guess what, my wife died, but I don't know why she died, but she died, and I'm going to stay single first of my life, or just let girlfriends sleep around, go have fun, do whatever they, do, they did in 1930s or 20s back yeah. in the day, right? 
yeah. in the middle of nowhere, right? So that's cool. But imagine how one female with decent education and a lot of commitment changed for all of us. And we're talking about a hundred years later. Well, and you use the word commitment, right? She was committed enough to see it all the way through. And well, you better believe it. She was, she was committed. It. Yeah. She I was committed. We can all be committed to ourselves and to our children, to, to choosing an intention. Like, how do I truly want to show up in this world? What's the impact that I want to leave behind? And if that becomes your commitment level, that's how we can change the world. And honor you for you. Honor you for your truth, for what your belief systems are. Get to know what, what your belief is, actually. Like, what is it that you do believe in? Don't just follow your parents' path. Like, true choose that for you and that will help you find that passion and that commitment to yourself too i agree with that listen how do people find you well bless you thanks first off for the sudden me be on here and for talking i love this your energy is amazing and uh, you guys can follow me on instagram at steph Ilif, s-t-e-f-i-l-i-f-f -F -F, or you guys can check out my website at coaching with steph s-t-e-f.com i have like a free self-love quiz y'all can take i have some free affirmations and journal downloads so go check that all out so you guys can work on your self-love so do they take it with their partner or do they take it alone? And they can take it alone. And your partner can take it with you too if you wanted. But it's more to help you self-evaluate. Like where am I the most out of balance with and where do I need to start to grow my self-love? Cool. And when, when you come into LA? Um, when are you buying me a plane ticket? I didn't hear that part. <laughs> Damn, man. Oh! You talk. You talk. <laughs> Listen, God help your husband. I want to do an interview with your husband. I want to meet that man. I'm not married. I'm not married. You're not married, but I saw I saw a picture with kids. Yeah, I, I have kids, so you, you can actually have kids and not be married. It's kind of weird how it works now. But um, so, <laughs> yeah, I was married. I got divorced. I found self-love. That's part of why I'm not married anymore. And so now I'm a single mom with two kids. So, yeah. Love it. More power. Listen, I got to tell you, you know, before, before I had my daughter, I didn't have – I had respect for single parents, period. Yeah. But I didn't know – the extent of it, because then I was put in those positions, mm -hmm. and and I felt I was like, damn, these female, especially single moms, man. Yeah. I don't. They're they're, they're all. There should be a, a single mom day on a calendar once every single month. Not well, once a year. You know, yes. it's, it's got. It's, it's like it's crazy how much shit you guys get done during the day. I don't know what. I don't know. I gotta. There, there should be a course. Where ten single moms are training that, and that that's the course by itself. Like how to do daily activities with with having children, and yeah. they want to have two kids, they need bigger trophies. Yes, I agree. I'll get that course out soon. Thanks for the next new best idea. I love it. Love it. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time out yeah. of your busy schedule. Definitely have lots of fun. I saw some of your stories, and the scenery is amazing over there. We Thank all just live in LA. We yes. love those hikes. We love those sceneries. We don't get that much of it here, but yeah. it does exist. But it's not like readily available like you guys got it. Well, come out here anytime. I'll take you. Take your whole family. I'll take them on adventures. You got it. Thank you so much Yay. for being here. Stay in touch. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Talk to you later. Bye bye.